Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode of the Resto Mod Mini, it is all about paint prep for the engine, for the car, for everything. So, you won't want to miss it, stay tuned for that. All right, now as I said, today's episode is all about preparation for paint. And you guys are probably pretty excited about this if you're even half as excited about this as I am because I am ready to see this shell, the color that it's gonna be, but also I'm ready to start putting stuff back together and kind of cleaning up this space. Obviously, it's a mess in here right now. You guys can't see off screen, but it is just chaos in this workshop and it's gonna get a lot better once more parts are back on the Mini. But we can't do that until we get the car painted, and we can't get the car painted until it's prepped. So, what does that mean for this shell and the Resto Mod build? Now, for this shell, what does preparation look like? Well, there are a few different special things that we're gonna be doing to this shell, which is a 1960 Morris Mini Minor shell. This is a Canadian shell, and I imported it from Canada, and the engine wasn't original when I bought it, but the rest of the shell and the body was. Now, there have been a few replacement panels, specifically in the floor, the boot floor and the rear seat, but for the most part, this shell is pretty much original. And it's really cool. It actually even has some of the original FE numbers on the inner areas of the engine bay. Now, for those of you who might not have been with the channel for a little while, this car used to be a bright blue color. It was a kind of poorly mixed version of Tahiti Blue, but it was very pretty. And I did some choice things, which we do here in the US more frequently than at other places, I think, which is a black engine bay, black underbody, and black interior. Now with the minis, they were originally all a single color with their whole shell painted the same color. That way you got the dash rails and the interior parts all the same color as the exterior of the car. When I originally rebuilt and restored this car with the help of so many, so many people, um, I didn't know those things. And as a result, I didn't do it exactly the way it was supposed to be with OEM. Now, this car is hardly going to be an OEM period restoration. I don't really care that much about it. Um, obviously, I am putting a drive-by-wire turbocharged A-series into this. It's not gonna be the original 850, and there's gonna be lots about it that's gonna be modernized. But the look and feel from the outside and from most of the inside, I'd like to be pretty original looking. So. What are we gonna to do to achieve that while also modernizing it at the same time? Well, we are no doubt going to get the car painted professionally. That's something that's outside of my skill set, but I definitely want it to be done right. There are a few things that we can do to prep it though. And one of the things that I'm gonna be doing is raptor lining a large portion of the non-visible parts. So, Raptor Liner is really cool stuff. You can tint it and it is a really strong, slightly textured um, bed liner originally. But lots of people will tint it to the exterior colors of their car and paint areas of the car they want extra protected and also to last and create a nice water seal barrier. Now, what areas are we gonna do inside my car? Well, we're gonna do quite a bit in that Raptor Liner. We're gonna hit the floors on the inside and the underside of the car. We're gonna hit the front bulkhead. We're gonna hit these wheel wells because they're gonna be covered up by fabric. We're gonna get behind the dash. We're gonna get the rear seat and the rear seat back. We're gonna do the entire interior of the trunk or the boot. And then the door pockets are all gonna get Raptor lined as well. Now, one thing we're not gonna be doing is Raptor lining the engine bay and I don't want any of the Raptor linered area to be really visible to most people. Obviously a little bit will peek through here and there, things like the wheel wells and the underside of the car right on the edges here, but that's okay because we are going to be paint matching that Raptor liner. With Raptor liner, there are a few things that you need to do first. Raptor liner can be applied over epoxy primer, a self etching primer like what we have here, 
and can be applied over original paint as long as it's been scuffed down and created a nice bonding texture to it. You can also use adhesion promoters and special grip primers made specifically from the Raptor Liner folks. Now, my car has epoxy primer, etch primer, kind of a mixture of different things all over it, um, which is great. We've got that part tackled and ready to go. But before we spray the Raptor Liner, we need to seal all the seams. So I picked up some urethane seam sealer from 3M. This is the stuff everybody told me I should get. Very uh, highly rated, so we'll see how well it works. But on today's episode, we are going to be seam sealing everything that we can. And then the car will head off to a buddy of mine's where we're gonna do some welding. I don't think I'll probably film most of that, but we'll probably pick it up and put it on a rotisserie so I can get the bottom seam sealed as well. Very exciting stuff, but Let's start off with what Seam Sealer does. Now the thing about Seam Sealer is there's nothing really to how you actually apply this stuff. It's effectively just caulk. Um, it is a very special uh, automotive grade caulk used to seal all of the surfaces and, and budding joints of welds and seams and all of the different things where, where water can get inside the car. Now, a perfect example of a spot that we would want to seam seal is every connecting joint where things are welded together. Now, it's a little hard for me to show you on camera, but right here is a seam that runs along the seat of your um, rear bench here and the seam that runs up against your door pocket. You can actually see light straight down into the bottom of the car there, and that's not too good. We want to avoid that. We want to avoid any gaps like that. This is why it's also important that while we are seam sealing the top side, we will want to do it to the bottom as well. So, got my seam sealer in here, got my caulk gun all primed and ready to go. Now, keep in mind, this is a messy job. You're going to want to wear gloves. And we're just going to start caulking all of these seams, or rather seam sealing all of these seams. Best thing to do is go ahead and run a bead across it, just like so, and then run your finger along and make sure that seam sealer has a nice smooth adhesion and gets down into all the nooks and crannies. Now, this stuff is pretty messy, and if you are looking for a really nice finish, you can do a few different things. One of those is to use a little bit of mineral spirits on your finger and run it along. Now, I'm not looking for beauty here because what's going to happen is we're going to prime over this and then we're also going to put Raptor liner over it. So I'm not too fussed about the line being an absolutely perfect little line, um, but I do want to make sure that it gets down into all of the cracks, nooks and crannies, so that this keeps everything nice and sealed. The nice thing about this 3M is that it is made to stay flexible. It's got a slightly rubberized, um, it's got a slightly rubberized component about it so that as it, your car flexes and expands and contracts with heat and cool, you're not going to break any of these seals in the future. Now, for those of you who are really clever, you probably already know this, but one of the biggest areas of water ingress is going to be your wheel wells. So it's important, even on the seams that look like they're perfectly sealed, go ahead and apply some seam sealer to it. It is going to cost you almost nothing to do this. Obviously, seam sealer isn't free, but doing this is going to ensure that the seal on the inside of your wheel well is much better. Also, for those of you, a little piece of trivia here. This Mark I used to have these big panels right here that would kind of protect the inner face of metal from water and debris and all of those things. Um, those panels, unfortunately, did not survive the disassembly. They were very, very rotten. Now, there are companies that remake and, and make these things. One of the companies that does that is catmint.biz. Um, he actually is the one who made my uh, front uh, rally dash, which is super, super cool and custom, but he does make replacement panels here. Um, I don't think I'm going to run panels in here anymore because I want to run a catch can up here and make some more space. But I wanted to call that out because it means that I need to make sure that it is super sealed up in here, all the way up to the top there.
one thing I got a lot of questions about when I posted this is flipping the car on its side. The big thing is, is that you are gentle with it and you prepare the landing surface with some cushions and hold it up and prop it up so it doesn't rest on the roof or on any of the side panels. We want it to be resting right down on the lip of the car where it bonds together and you can see all of the side of the car is on these cushioned platforms. Now, this is not to say that your car might not flex or bend a little bit. This is the nature of minis. They're not incredibly strong around the body, but just be gentle with it and I think you will be just fine with your car. Oh, hey guys, sorry to interrupt you. I will get you guys back to your regularly scheduled classic mini DIY content shortly. I just wanted to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, which is you. That's right, Classic Mini DIY is a fully independent channel. While we do work with wonderful brands like Haltech and Seven Mini Parts and Mini Mania now, Classic Mini DIY is a fully independent channel, fully supported by you, the viewer. How does that work? It works through my Patreon channel, which is the direct connection to getting behind the scenes content, access to a custom private Discord where we jump on there and tackle everybody's technical problems from top to bottom, from simple to complex. That is an always on channel. We have a wonderful group of people on there from all over the world who love to help each other. And you could be part of that Discord channel too if you'd like to support the channel and help on a monthly basis. There are all sorts of ways to do that with all sorts of different levels to fit different budgets, and I even offer a free trial so you can try out that Discord channel yourself before committing to a monthly subscription, which I know you guys probably already have a million of. But if that's something that you'd like to do and you'd like to become a supporter of this independent channel, head over to my Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash classic mini DIY where all your support goes directly into making these videos, paying for camera equipment, labor, and connecting you guys with all of the really cool part suppliers that are out there for Classic Minis. I have no brand specific loyalty associated with my builds and I love to work with every different brand. So I do my best to provide impartial access to lots of information for you guys. But that's my spiel. Thanks for tuning into this and I'll let you get back to your regularly scheduled video and get you back to painting the shell. So see you soon. Okay, so you guys have just seen, I've spent the last better part of two weeks prepping the underside and the interior space of this mini in order to prep it for Raptor Liner. Now, for this build, I am going to be Raptor Lining a lot of the bottom of the car, the interior parts that are not visible, the boot, and a few other things as part of the whole kind of uh, resto mod, but also just prepping this thing to be a driver and something that can stand up to the elements over the years. Now, there are a lot of different products out there. I am gonna be using the Raptor liner because it is tintable. There are a few other products that you can paint over with the body color that are also tintable, but this one came the highest rated and this is what is easily available here in the US. So what this is gonna do is provide a nice textured finish on the bottom and it's going to be tinted the exact color that I'm gonna be painting the rest of the car. So the bottom of the car, some portions of the engine bay are not gonna stand out being black or like a gray or anything like that. It is going to be the body color, which is really cool. Now there's two ways you can do this with Raptor Liner. You can either get the tint directly from them and they will mix it up to a paint code that you send them. It works really well. They have a pretty good track record of getting the color pretty accurate 
or you can go to your paint shop who's maybe painting the rest of the car, the exterior portions, and have them work up a little bit of the tint, a little bit of the paint in order to, you know, tint this with the exact color that your car is gonna be getting. I actually had my paint shop, he did some test sheets for me for the paint on the exterior and had a bunch of the paint left over. We're gonna be using that as our tint. And each one of these bottles requires about three ounces of tint in order to make it totally right. Now, let's jump over to the bottom of the car here. I'm just gonna go over quickly what I did in order to prep it. Now, looking at the bottom of the car here, you can see it's got kind of a nice uh, etched finish to it. I don't know how well the camera picks it up, hopefully pretty good. But essentially, the reason that it is etched and what I have done in order to prep for this Raptor liner, I followed the instructions directly on their tin to tell you exactly what you need to do. Essentially, it can be applied over epoxy primer, etch primer, self-etching primer, or a surface that has been etched down in order to adhere to the Raptor liner really nicely. Now, when the body got sandblasted, they put a self-etching primer on the bottom. That's what a lot of the light green you see here is. But in addition to that, I had to seam seal a lot of the old welds because the sandblasting took a lot of that off. Now, it's important to seam seal all of your welds and your seams because, well, water will get into those and cause rust, and I don't want that in the future. So, we went through and seam sealed all of this. You guys saw that time lapse of some of the seam sealing being done. The Raptor liner cannot be applied directly to a seam sealer according to their specifications. So I got a seam sealer you could put self-etching primer on and then on top of that, I did a little scuff coat. So all of the self-etching primer has a nice key to it as well as the seam sealer. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is Raptor lining the entire bottom of the car. This includes the entire boot floor as well as the battery box in the rear here. I'm also going to be doing the wheel wells and this area up to the bulkhead beam here underneath the engine and underneath the kind of visible portions of the engine bay. I'm gonna protect all of this, protect this as well. The top side though is going to be that nice clear coat finish that's gonna be on the rest of the car. It's a little hard to see here, but we're also going to be doing the entire interior floor of the Mini here. I'm gonna leave the door pockets the nice green color so that they are nice and pretty. And I'm also gonna do the rear seat on the back there as well as the backrest and the door pockets. Now getting to the spraying portion of this Raptor liner, the spraying process isn't actually that difficult. The gun itself sprays a little bit differently than your traditional paint. This does more of a job of just like flinging it and throwing it onto the surface that you're spraying it towards as opposed to atomizing everything. And it leaves a nice textured finish, but it does require a nice keen eye to make sure that you are hitting all of the different angles and getting that coverage really good. Now, I'm going to show you guys the spraying process of the floor here as well as some of the wheel wells. Actually getting this and getting it filmed in all the different places was pretty difficult, making sure that I was balancing actually getting the hardener in this spray and making sure that it was spraying on and it wasn't going to dry too quickly. Now, I took extra care to spray the tunnel here. That actually got a few coats so that it was nice and heat resistant with the turbocharged downpipe and everything. There's a lot of heat coming out of there. But I think the results are going to speak for themselves here when I show them to you. Uh, the coverage was great and I used all eight bottles of this Raptor liner to cover everything. All right, 
So that is gonna wrap up this episode of Classic Mini DIY. We got a ton of really hard work or at least really tedious work done on the shell and I'm really happy to cap it off with this. We got the Raptor liner in. I need to put one small coat, a few touch up spots on a few places in the wheel wells. But other than that, the Raptor liner is done. And all that's left is going to be bringing the doors, the body, the new hood and the new boot lid all to the body shop. And they're gonna paint that stuff for me and get it the nice, beautiful willow green that I want it to be. Now, if I waited for that to be done, I think this video wouldn't come out for another like three or four weeks, maybe even longer. And so the next steps will be really just getting into the weeds of assembling the engine, getting down and cleaning the subframe and a suspension components. I'm not really gonna cover that. I've covered those at length in my previous videos, but the engine has some really cool tidbits that I'm not gonna share right now. I'm gonna keep you guys waiting and guessing on that but we are gonna be tackling some really cool and really unique things on my A-Series engine to prepare it for the turbocharged power, but also for reliability. Now, if you want early access to that information, behind the scenes access and access to a Discord channel, which is a one-on-one -on -one chat with me that's open and online all the time, head over to my Patreon. It is patreon.com forward slash classic mini DIY consider supporting the channel, and I even offer free trials so you can take a look and see if it's something that you wanna do, all of which helps to enable me to do enormous projects like this and share them with you guys. Pays for the camera equipment, all of the labor, all the different things that we do on these projects. So it's a great way to support the channel if that's something that you'd like to do. But that is gonna wrap up this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I appreciate you so much. I will see you on the next one, and until then, you know the drill. Enjoy those minis, and motor on. See you guys.